The kabaya is interesting, very beautiful, and it upturns everything we know about Pranakan fashion. Traditionally in Southeast Asia, women did not wear tailored garments. They were either topless or they wore cloths wrapped around the body. So cutting and tailoring a garment was an influence that came from Iran actually, through India and it passed down to Southeast Asia. Then we come to the 20th century, a new style emerged and this was the lace kabaya. The kabaya is an open jacket. It was the principal kind of garment. The word kabaya comes from the word khaba, which is an old Persian word for long robe. We have an example here of a kabaya from the late 19th century. We had communities of Eurasian women in Java and they liked wearing white kabayas. They added lace borders or edges to them. So the technique of lace making came from Europe. But by the 1900s, this was already kind of a traditional craft in Southeast Asia called renda. Very fine handmade, what they call pillow lace from Palembang. As you come into the early decades of the 20th century, handmade lace was too expensive. So people bought machine-made lace in rolls like this. These were made in Europe and sold in haberdashery shops in Singapore, in, in Batavia or Jakarta. The sewing machine also allowed more creativity in terms of patterns. So we see by the 1950s, people wanting to have new designs. So here we have something made with a sewing machine. And instead of the lace-like effect, we have fish scales and a dragon. It did not conform to any other kind of national dress. And to me, it indicated a forgotten story of women who did not really want to subscribe to any fixed idea of nationality or race or ethnicity. We often think of dress in Asia as something traditional. But in fact, it has always been a fashion. The history of the Kumbaya is so varied. It's about what we share rather than what is uniquely ours. Pranakan culture has always been fluid. And in that sense, so has Singapore culture. It isn't a unified, monocultural entity. It's really fractured and different and colourful. In fact, that is what we should celebrate in Singapore.